In this video, we're diving into one of the most exciting breakthroughs in physics, the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics, who won it, and exactly why their work is revolutionizing the way we understand quantum phenomena. But before we reveal the laureates and their groundbreaking discoveries, there's a foundational concept you absolutely need to grasp. And don't worry, it's mind-blowing, but totally fascinating. Let's start with something that's everywhere around you. Electrons. Everything you see, touch or interact with is made up of atoms. And orbiting around these atoms are electrons. Now, here's the catch. Electrons are not little balls or dots zipping around randomly like tiny planets around the sun. No, that's a classical oversimplification. In the quantum world, electrons behave in ways that defy our everyday intuition. Instead of thinking of an electron as a particle, Imagine it as a cloud of possibilities, often called a probability cloud. This isn't just a fuzzy, abstract idea. It's a mathematical and physical description of where the electron could possibly be at any given time. This cloud can take different shapes depending on the electron's energy, and each of these shapes is described by something physicists call a wave function. Every unique wave function corresponds to a distinct electron behavior. So, what does this actually mean? Let's visualize it. Imagine using a super precise particle detector to find an electron somewhere in space. When you detect it, all you see is a tiny glowing dot. That's the electron in the act of being observed. But, and here's the crazy part. Before we observe it, the electron doesn't exist as a neat dot at all. It's something entirely different, something far more fluid and abstract. It exists as a hazy, diffused cloud of possibilities, spreading out across space. This is the electron's probability cloud. And here's something even more fascinating. This cloud isn't just a vague idea or a mathematical trick. It carries charge, energy, and mass. It's real in a physical sense, even if it doesn't have a fixed boundary or a concrete shape. Then something extraordinary happens the moment we measure it. All those countless possibilities, every potential position, every potential outcome, collapse into a single reality. And that tiny dot we see is the manifestation of that collapse. In other words, the electron doesn't take on particle-like properties until we measure it. Until then, it's a wave-like cloud of probabilities. Now, with that visualization in mind, let's dig deeper. Electrons aren't just floating randomly. They occupy energy levels around an atom. But here's a subtle but important point. These levels aren't physical layers or shells you can see floating around the nucleus. They are actually patterns in the electron's probability wave, the wave function we just talked about. Take a hydrogen atom as a simple example. In its ground state, which is the lowest possible energy configuration, the electron's wave spreads out as a smooth, spherical cloud around the nucleus. Think of it as a soft, glowing mist perfectly centered. But when the electron absorbs energy, something incredible happens. Its wave doesn't simply move faster. Instead, the entire cloud reshapes and expands, representing a higher energy state. Between these energy states, there are regions called nodes, where the probability of finding the electron drops almost to zero. Imagine these like the silent spots on a vibrating guitar string. If the electron absorbs even more energy, its cloud grows more complex, stretching into forms that resemble three-dimensional flowers, with lobes pointing in various directions. These are the famous p orbitals, 2, p, x, 2, p, p, y, and 2, p, p, z, each oriented differently in space. So, the next time someone says an electron jumps from one orbit to another, don't think of it as a particle physically hopping. What's really happening is that the electron's wave function is changing shape, reorganizing itself into a new stable configuration that perfectly fits the atom's potential field. Now that we've laid the groundwork of quantum mechanics, let's move to something even stranger, quantum tunneling. Imagine again a hydrogen atom. The electron is normally held close to the nucleus by electrostatic attraction, a kind of invisible glue. Scientists often visualize this binding force as a potential barrier, a kind of wall the electron cannot pass according to classical physics. Here's where it gets weird. Even if an electron doesn't have enough energy to overcome this barrier,
quantum mechanics says it can still appear on the other side. How? Because its wave function, the probability cloud, leaks slightly beyond the barrier. This phenomenon is called quantum tunneling, and it's one of the most mind-bending aspects of quantum physics. Physicists can exploit tunneling in fascinating ways. By applying a strong electric field across an atom, they can distort the electron's probability cloud. One side of the atom develops a denser electron cloud, while the other side thins out. This tilts the potential barrier, making it easier for the electron's wave function to extend beyond the wall. In this way, part of the probability cloud escapes without the electron having the classical energy to do so. This isn't just theoretical, it's been experimentally verified countless times. And this brings us to the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics, which was awarded to John Clark, Michael H. DeVore, and John M. Martinez. Their achievement? They showed that quantum effects are not confined to tiny particles like electrons, but can also occur in larger, carefully engineered systems. They achieved this using a device called a Josephson junction, which is a thin insulating layer sandwiched between two superconductors. Normally, electrons cannot pass through an insulator. But in a superconductor, electrons form Cooper pairs, behaving collectively as a single, coherent quantum wave. And just like an electron in an atom, this wave can tunnel through the insulating barrier. Inside the Josephson junction, the superconducting wave is trapped in a kind of potential well, similar to how an electron is trapped around a nucleus. The wave can occupy different energy states, and in higher energy states, more of it stretches into the barrier, making tunneling more likely. By applying precise microwave pulses, scientists can control these energy states, effectively manipulating the tunneling probability at will. This is where things get revolutionary. By controlling the quantum state of these superconducting circuits, Josephson junctions can function as quantum bits, or qubits, the fundamental units of quantum computers. A qubit in its lowest energy state can represent zero, while the next energy state can represent one. But here's the quantum twist. Due to superposition, a qubit can be both zero and one at the same time, vastly increasing computational power. The work of Clark, DeVore, and Martinez demonstrated that even circuits made of millions of electrons, macroscopic systems, can display quantum behavior, including tunneling. They essentially created artificial atoms, man-made systems that mimic the behavior of real atoms. These artificial atoms are now the building blocks of quantum computers, ultra-sensitive sensors, and next-generation quantum technologies. Their experiments not only proved that quantum effects could scale up, but also provided a blueprint for how to control and harness them for real-world applications. So, to summarize, electrons exist as probability clouds, and their behavior is governed by quantum mechanics. Quantum tunneling allows particles, and now macroscopic waves in superconductors, to leak through barriers they shouldn't be able to cross classically. And the 2025 Nobel laureates harnessed this effect using Josephson junctions to engineer artificial atoms and qubits, laying the foundation for the next era of quantum technology. This discovery is not just about building faster computers, it's about fundamentally understanding the universe at a deeper level. It shows that quantum mechanics, once thought to be the domain of the microscopic, is alive and controllable in systems we can manipulate in the lab. We're witnessing the dawn of a new age where quantum rules govern not just the tiniest particles, but also the devices that could change the world. And that's why this Nobel Prize is so significant. It's not just an award for a clever experiment. It's recognition that we can now engineer quantum behavior, create artificial atoms, and build technologies that were once the realm of science fiction. Quantum computing, ultra-precise sensors, and even quantum internet systems all trace their roots back to these experiments. In a sense, what Clark, DeVore, and Martinez did is connect two seemingly separate worlds. The bizarre quantum realm of electrons and the tangible, macroscopic world of circuits. They proved that the strange, counterintuitive rules of quantum mechanics are not just abstract theory. They can be tamed, controlled, and put to work. So the next time you hear about quantum computing or Josephson junctions, 
remember that it all starts with something as tiny and intangible as an electron's probability cloud. And from that cloud, we are building machines that could redefine everything from computing power to sensing the universe itself. This brings us to the end of today's exploration into quantum mechanics, quantum tunneling, and the incredible work behind the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics. I hope you found it as mind-expanding and inspiring as I did. The quantum world is strange, beautiful, and full of surprises. And thanks to these pioneering scientists, we're just beginning to see how much control we can exert over it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Which part blew your mind the most? The idea of electrons as probability clouds, quantum tunneling, or the creation of artificial atoms and qubits? Thanks for watching and stay curious, because the quantum universe is only getting started.